Welcome to Monroe Live. My name is John. I am a lead engineer here at Monroe & Associates. We are an engineering consulting firm with a design first approach. What we do here also is, is tear down benchmarking, costing, and design improvements. Um, you can see on the table in front of me, we've done a partial teardown of the Eagle 1100 series lawnmower, self-propelled. Uh, typically when we do teardowns, everything will be bagged and tagged. We haven't got that far yet. So we're gonna talk about what we have here currently on the table. We're gonna focus on the battery itself only for this video. Now, this is the battery <clears throat> that came with the mower. This is a 10, 10 amp hour, 56 volt. Uh, battery. Their entire battery fleet is 56 volts. The only thing that changes is the amp hours. Uh, and you can see uh, with these particular other batteries, these happen to be mine because I personally own um, quite a few Ego tools and each one either did or did not come with a battery. I've got a lot more of these at my house. I just thought the audience might want to see a 2.5 amp a 4 amp, a 5 amp, a 6 amp, and a 7.5 7 amp hour battery. And you can see the different sizes between them. And that's just basically based on how many uh, battery cells are in each package. And a, <clears throat> one thing that stands out to me, other than the different sizes, which isn't a big deal, is um, the fact that as we progress from the 7.5 amp hour battery to the 10 amp hour battery um, the uh, the rubber a lot of the rubber tends to go away for some reason i like this with my stuff because i have tac tactile feeling across almost the entire battery as i'm putting it in taking it out walking down the down the uh, grass with it up the driveway in my garage whatever i don't have to worry about dropping that or these with this particular battery, it would have been nice if they had put the overmolded rubber over the plastic um, because it's a little slippery, especially when you're sweaty. But I guess we could work around that if I had this particular battery. So having said that, I want to point out a few other things that are different from <clears throat> the earlier versions. And these are anywhere from two to three years old. This lot right here. This is brand new. Um, you can see differences here between the little uh, window ports. These holes are molded in on all of these, even on the sides. On both sides, on all of these. Whereas this guy, you can clearly see they've got something that's been assembled from the inside, some kind of a woven material. And I don't know why they went that route. That's extra processing, extra parts. Uh, here too, the same as the top. But you can see they've got mold in little ports in their windows here uh, and on the other side. So that's a little different too. So I don't understand why they went that route compared to these guys. All these do is allow um, heat to dissipate through the battery pack as the batteries are being exercised. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this apart, this guy apart, and we're gonna see what's inside. And again, this will not be a detailed analysis because we're not doing a deep dive. This is a cursory look at what's inside this guy. <clears throat> and while I'm taking this apart, I'll let you know that <clears throat> this is a 14S 4P configuration. Inside here, there are 56 18650 battery cells in this package. Ego actually makes it pretty simple to take these apart. It requires a security Torx bit that's got a little hole in here. And there's a little pin inside the Torx socket too. So you can't use a regular Torx bit to get in here to do what I'm doing right now. They try to make it tamper-proof, but for guys like us here at Monroe, nothing is really tamper-proof. And by the way, I have taken apart these guys in my garage. 
when I first get them. Not all of them, but some of them. I like to see what's inside. Before I take things apart, you can see here where you've got the um, terminal slots. These actually will engage the charger. This charger came with the unit, so you would put the battery on. I think everybody would knows this. Put the battery on, engage in a docking station. And with this dude, it on turbo mode, you can charge this thing in 60, in, uh, 60 minutes, that's one hour. And after one hour, you get um, the equivalent of about 70 minutes runtime. I guess that's at optimum uh, performance. And again, before I take this apart, let's talk a little bit about this gauge, this fuel gauge, or we call it the charge gauge. Uh, right now, out of the box, it came to us at 10%, 20% overall. So this battery is at 20% state of charge currently. So if I bought this unit, <clears throat> First thing I would do, I wouldn't take it apart. I would charge this battery full so that I had 100% uh, state of charge. So again, 10, 20, 60, 80, 100. So if this was 100% state of charge, it would look like this guy. Take this off you can see this will really be the only part we'll talk about the overmold on but you've got your abs plastic that's the green stuff and you've got your your rubber overmold it's it's squishy you can grab it you don't have to worry about dropping it uh, again that's why i like all this black rubber stuff to be here uh, maybe in the future Remove the bottom. So the bottom is attached to the battery cells uh, and also to the terminal slots here. Um, here is the front bottom side. Here is the inside part of everything. Circuit board activity for communication. Um, you've got your array of battery cells. And one, one cool thing that uh, Eagle does, does and which is why I bought their platform, is because they use what they call an arc arrangement with their cells. You can see this. It looks like a happy face uh, from the camera angle. And this is good because it's good for heat dissipation. Uh, another thing I can see here, too, is um, <clears throat> before we go too much farther, is these don't have the face change materials, which is a sleeve uh, around each cell. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier there are 56 cells in here. This is a 14, 14S 4P arrangement. Um, there is no face, face change sleeves on any of these units or any, any of these battery cells, and that's because uh, the load going through these are going through more parallel cells than uh, the ones that do require the face change uh, material. Uh, so it's, it's carrying less current overall. So having said that, I'm gonna move this here and move this here. There is phase change material in the two, five, four, and five amp. So if we were to open one of these guys, you would see sleeves around each one of the battery cells in these three. The break point is the six amp hour forward. They don't have the phase change sleeves. They're not required. Uh, so we're going to flip this around, move the top, comes off real easy. Kind of like what I like to show here is what we talked about earlier about this is not molded in like this. They have gone through the effort of adding extra material and then heat staking that extra material in place uh, for some reason. Again, this is added cost, it's added parts more operations on your assembly line. So I don't understand why they did that compared to these guys, all these guys, their predecessors. So again, you can see, this is a pretty sophisticated 
unit actually. Eagle does a good job. Their BMS, which controls the entire battery, the temperature, the state of state of health of uh, everything that's happening in here, um, is potted. So you can't see it. It's in there. It's secure. It's not going anywhere. You can't work on it if something goes wrong with it. And that's that's a good thing because if it was loose, well, things might uh, work themselves loose, and then you'd have a defective battery pack that would have to get reworked. The connections are all siliconed in place. You can see there's three areas where they're connected. It's a combination of um, termination wires, communication wires, uh, balancing wires. There's also a combination of um, temperature sensing um, activity going on in there too. Here, we see some insulated, insulated material, which is absolutely critical. Behind that, I'm not gonna peel this off until we do a full teardown on this. But behind this white material, which is insulation material, you have um, an array of, um, oh, you have an array of uh, bus bars or interconnects, whatever you might want to call it. And these are actually joined to the cell, each cell. And then on the back side, you have the same thing. Again, we're not taking this apart fully yet. You have insulated material on both sides here in the middle and here at the end and they have over here back in the middle they have a local uh, battery management system here and here that's attached to uh, each battery cell and all that feeds into the BMS for control and overall battery management. The, again, to recap, these are 18650 cells. There's 56 of these guys in this package. Um, it's structured in an arc. So these things um, can properly passive balance. Um, there's, no, there's no phase change sleeves on any one of these cells because there's more cells in parallel that the load is passing through. So the cells are seeing less load than they, will, they would with like a... a uh, a 1P or a 2P configuration. And I think for the most part, this is about it for this particular presentation. Um, thank you for watching Monroe Live. Um, if we tear this down further, we're going to do another segment and we'll get into the nuts and bolts um, of this. Um, it'll be a lot more detailed. Uh, please visit our website at leandesign.com if you need to have us look at any of your products. Thank you.